Bam. What is happening, guys? It is me again, Honest Dave, coming you today with another knack review over the Viper 10. Now, I got this knife in a tray not too long ago for a ZT-0200. I don't know how long it's been. You can go check out my unboxing of this to see the exact date if you want. I don't really care. That's it, I'm in about a week or two. And, well, I'm already trading it off. I know, I know. Damn, this guy can't make up his mind. No, I can't. I gotta always try something different. And, well, this is a good knife. I like it. But there are things that keep me from carrying it as much as I would like to. But I'll get into the, the end of the video. So like normal, I'm going to start with my stats, then I'm going to talk about what I like about this knife, and what I don't like about this knife. Alright. So let's start. The closed length of the blade is 4 inches. The blade length is 3.375 inches, and the overall length is 7.375 inches. <clears throat> this knife weighs in at a measly 3.7 ounces, or 3.70 ounces, however you want to say it. That's not a bad thing either, I do like a lightweight knife, most of the time. Now the blade steel itself, I've actually never heard of this blade steel, is Bowler N690. I have never heard of that blade steel. It has a Rockwell harness of 57 to 59. Right, that's all the boring crap out of the way. Now the handle is carbon fiber. And this very weird way of putting a lock on it. Some people say, like, well, it's a simple frame lock. I don't really know what you'd call this. Because, yes, there are liners in there where the liners itself is screwed in, and this piece is screwed on on top of the liners. Some are calling it a frame lock, some are calling it a liner lock. I would call it a frame lock. It has stainless steel, and over that is a piece of titanium. That's really cool, in my opinion. I really like that idea. It has a purple titanium uh, backspacer, <clears throat> which uh, it's got a couple little scratches, but nothing too major. It is nice and small. We have a great church knife or a gentleman's knife. I mean, you might be being in the office and someone needs your help. Like, hey, Bob, can you cut this for me? Oh, sure. You know what they're going to look like when they see that and come out of your pocket if they're a knife guy? You know if they're not a knife guy, they're going to say, like, oh, that's a beautiful knife. There it is. I like it. It's a very low, low carry pocket clip. Yeah, let me try and find something here. Alright, say this is your pocket. All they're really going to see is the pocket clip and maybe a tiny bit of the top of the lip at the bottom of the handle. Because it is more of an angle instead of just flat, which I'm good with. It does have a lanyard hold there. And it has a ball bearing system, making it smooth as Vaseline. I have not had any problems with this knife not opening all the way. The flipper does work as a finger guard. That along with the jimping here on top of the blade. The finger groove in the lip does make it very secure in your hand. And I like that. This knife is made in Italy, by the way. It has Viper 10, or actually technically 10 Viper, printed on the blade. If I can somehow block off this light a little bit and let you see. On here it has the steel type. And I believe that is the maker's logo. 
I don't know. It has a polished satin finish, which picks up fingerprints like a motherfucker. There's a nice swedge up here, unsharpened of course, and a nice drop point. Now what would you use this knife for? This is not a tactical knife. Huh? No, in no way is it a tactical knife, in my opinion it's way too small for that. Then again, some may disagree because they say technically all you need is three inches for a tactical knife to be, you know, useful. That might be true, but I prefer to carry something a little bit larger. And I know you guys are getting tired of seeing that spider co already, so let's switch up what's in David's pocket with a knife I have not shown you yet. And I won't show you until I do a review on it. Let's just say this just this is a Kershaw knife. Huh? And let's see if you can guess what it is. And no, I have not had this this long. I have not done any videos on it yet, but whatever. Well let's get back to what we're talking about. The Viper 10. Like I said, it has this beautiful mirror polish satin design. Not fully mirror polish, but enough to pick up every fingerprint you can think of. It is a V grinder, meaning both sides are sharpened, unlike a chisel grinder, which I'm not really a big fan of, but whatever. Now, like I said, some of the areas of the carbon fiber are smoothed down. Like here on the back, they're very smooth. And honestly, it is, you know, being carbon fiber, it's kind of slippery. But you can get this in G10 as well if you want. I will post a link to this one in the description down below. And you can buy this knife for around 190 bucks. The other ones are slightly cheaper. But, you know, if you really enjoy this design, you know, it's just an idea where to start. I don't really know if that's a retail price, because I did check the original website for the retail, and... I can't find the price on there anywhere, and that's kind of annoying, but whatever. And if you do go to that website, make sure you switch it to English, because it only comes in English or Italian. I can't read Italian. So, yeah. It has a double pivot screw, which is good. This is a factory edge still, honestly, because I really haven't really used this besides cutting paper to test the sharpness. And there are reasons I don't carry this knife as much as, say, one of my other knives. So like I said, I don't think it's big enough for tactical use. It's not really comfy enough in the hand for everyday use, if you ask me. I definitely don't want to use it as a work knife because I really, I don't really usually bathe my knives, but I think that's a little bit too pretty to be used as a work knife because, you know, besides, you know, my old job at the pharmacy, right now I'm hanging sheetrock. I don't want to be cutting sheetrock with this and ruin that perfectly good blade. This this product does have a warranty, by the way. Let me get the let me get the literature down for you. And if you do get it, it does come with Italian or English instructions. <clears throat> I'm not going to read all this, by the way. But it gives you the standard stuff: guidelines for proper use, care and maintenance. Precautions, warranty. And they say we warrant this Viper knife will be for. Okay, mind, this is translated to English, probably by some guy that doesn't speak that well, so there's gonna be a few little screw ups. But you know what? We warrant this Viper knife will be free from defects in materials and workmanship. It has a limited lifetime warranty. The, this warranty does not cover normal wear. Any damage caused by neglect, misuse, and failure to perform normal or necessary maintenance as illustrated in the guidelines will be void of warranty. It's got the phone number, where to send it, the email, all that stuff. And of course, precautions and injuries, which I always find dumb. Like this one I do find quite dumb. <clears throat> Do not cut yourself. No shit. Whatever. But there is one thing on here that actually made me laugh my ass off because I have never seen this on a different on any other knife. 
Okay, I've been, keep in mind, I've been in the knife business for the past decade, okay? Ten years of experience. I have never seen this anywhere. <clears throat> Disposal. Once you decide it's time to stop using your knife, do not dispose it. Don't dispose of it in the environment. Take it to your municipal waste disposal service in accordance to your local laws. I have never heard that before. You know, yeah, I've thrown away a couple of knives that you know were busted or honestly just pieces of shit. But I've never actually seen a company with a warranty, by the way, to tell you, oh, you're done using your knife, you don't like it anymore? Oh, no, don't bother selling it or anything. Ah, just throw it in the dump. Have you ever heard of that besides this brand I just told you about? Leave it in the comments below if you have ever heard of that from a different, any other company. Because I honestly never have. Whatever, I'm getting off topic. I just find that funny. <laughs> but now, like I said, of all the good things I said about the blade and the knife and what I like about it, it I gotta d be fair and do it. Did give this exact same justice I did to the ZT-0200 and why I'm already training it off. Oh, and for one thing, one of the main reasons I am trading it off is because I did get, you know, two good deals on it. One was a Boker Vox uh, 7.3, I think it's called, or V3, whatever it's called. Which I like the knife, I like the idea of it, but, yeah, you know. I may have never actually dealt with a Boker knife itself, but I've kind of gotten, you know, used to that design. Plus, I didn't like the blade length, honestly, on that one. I thought for what it was, and how he built it was, and how heavy it was, and all that stuff, I think the blade length of three and a quarter inches is just ridiculous. But I'm not going to tell you the knife I traded for either. Okay, I will give you a hint though. It, I think I've mentioned this in the past, but it is one of my grail knives from my second favorite company to buy knives from. Let's see if you guys can guess. I believe I have mentioned before. Actually, no, it was the little brother to one of my ground knives from my second favorite company. <clears throat> like I said, now let's get into the reasons why I am trading this knife off. I know a lot of people like the small blade, and that's fine. Oh, and one more thing I forgot to even mention. I, I should have mentioned this before. This is a two-way positional knife. Left hand or right hand, tip up carry only. So, to anyone who likes tip down carry, I know there's a few of you. Sorry, you're screwed. Oh, and one more thing I had to mention that I really don't like about this design. With this lanyard hold right here, I hate the way they set it up. I don't usually use lanyards, but to anyone who does, I really hate this idea. As you can see, you have a normal lanyard hold right there. It looks normal. But then you realize it's going right through the clip. Okay? Let me illustrate my problem with this. Like I said, you know, this might be an issue to people who do like, you know, to use lanyards on their pocket knives. This deep carry knife will no longer be all that deep carry. You'll be pushing up against your pocket. And honestly, you know, you yeah, better stay on the bed for this one. You know, that's, you know, I don't like that. They should have thought of something else. I mean, I guess if you wanted though, you can just take the pocket clip off, because this is small enough just fit in your pocket room without any real issues. So, which, by the way, you can do just by unscrewing these two Torx bits, which I'm guessing you need a T6 Torx for. So that's one issue I have. I really don't like the pocket clip design with that. And honestly, my other design flaw with it is really just in the handle itself, not really the blade. Because the blade I like. The weight I like. The maker I like. The material I like. I just don't like this handle at all, really. And it's not because it's made out of carbon fiber and titanium. I think it's awesome. But... You know, like I said, you know, while I said, like, the top part of this right here, where your palm is, well, that's nice and rounded, this part where your fingers will be is not rounded at all. It's sharp. 
I, and I, this finger twirl right here, you know, I wish I just made this round instead of this square because you get, you know, bumps in that one. This lip right here, I wish they made it just a little bit farther down or just, you know, kind of filed some of this down right here. Because I like to dig in your hands. Like, this is me holding it nice and gently, okay? I'm getting a billion hot spots in my fingers. Let me try and show you. Like I said, the back of it's nice and comfy, but all of these, sh all of these sharp corners and this freaking swedge right here they put on both sides of the handle, that's what's really, I think, is getting me, is because that shit is sharp. That hurts. This lip, it likes to dig right in my, bo in my bottom finger, and I have about, I'd say, medium to large size hands. Okay, if your hands are any bigger than mine, then I really don't see you holding this comfortably. I mean, I'm sure some people can handle it, but if I'm trying to carry a nice small knife, I don't want uncomfortable, you know, areas of my hand. That is one thing the ZT I did to trade off for this hat. Which, if you remember the reason I got rid of that, it was way too big and heavy in my opinion. But it was nice and comfy in the hand. This one is not. So like I said, if they, what I think they should have done was just leave this material here, don't scrape it off, because I don't think anyone's going to mind an extra couple of, well not even, just a little bit more weight. File this down far, round all these corners, make this round instead of this bump. And my biggest problem with this hand knife, with this whole knife, is the pocket clip. I hate that clip. You can see how much it stands out with these sharp edges on it. Like I said, this is me holding it nice and gently. That clip is digging so painful into my hand. These edges are digging so painful in my hand. I don't like to carry it. Because this is what I, this is, should be what you would call an EDC plus, thing. Well, actually no. Yes, this is a common problem with like the most what people call the perfect EDC knives. Yes, it's nice and comfortable in your pocket, yes. But, you know, it's a knife. You're going to be using your hands to use it. That is ungodly comfortable. I don't want an uncomfy knife in my hands. That's why I love a lot of these knives I have down here. Let's see, that's a bad example. This spider comb. Nice, rounded handle. Great finger chill too. I love it. This nice and this nice and smooth Buck 110. Nice, rounded, comfortable handles. The CRK TM21. Nice and comfortable in the hand. This is Satsu. It's probably one of the most comfortable knives I have to hold on to. My Kershaw Blur. That is nice and comfy, and that's, no, that's really not that much heavier than this one. Hell, I'm pretty sure this one and the spider core are the same weight. This other spider core, same thing, which I'm also trading this one off, by the way. I know. But, you know, I don't, you know that one's just more of a decoration piece. That's a user knife. Sorry, but I like to just carry decoration piece knives. I don't really need to stay on track these videos. The Saturday Moon Land. Nice and comfy. And yes, that was an $8 knife in the box. Bird Crossbill. Nice and comfy. The Smith & Wesson. Nice and comfy. Okay, a little bit of hot spot right there, but hey. That's one of the things you have to give up to have a really great opening mechanism. The small Victorian Ox. Nice and comfy. You know what, fucking, I'll give you a sneak peek. My, Emer my Kershaw Emerson CQC4XL. I love that handle. I love that feeling. 
So I've got all these knives right here with great handles, nice and comfortable. While this thing is ungodly uncomfortable to handle. And I really don't like that. Now I know some people would say like, oh, we just switch to your other hand. No, it hurts. This one, it digs into my palm. This one is killing my freaking pinky in my fingers. So that is unfortunately why I am not going to be holding on to the Viper Carbon Fiber 10. Uh, you know, and if, if you have smaller hands than me, and you can handle a few bumps in your hand, hey, this would be a perfect knife for you. But if you're like me and you really don't like an uncomfortable knife in your hand, I really cannot suggest this one. Like I said, I gave my, I gave my viewpoints on this knife. The stats, the price, the things I like about it, the things I don't like about it. So I think, guys, that is the end of this video. So this has been Honest Dave, and I am signing out. Bye, and remember, be humble and kind.